Hello Elvis fans. Let's talk a little bit about hints that Elvis may or may not have left behind for us to let us know what was going to happen. Uh, there's a lot of hints uh, that some believe he left behind. Um, there's a lot of hints that may just be coincidence uh, and I can't fit them all into one video so I'm going to focus on the important hints that I believe were hints left behind and uh, later maybe we can do another video of the ones that are possibly hints and maybe not <coughs> so I would like to start <coughs> with hints that Elvis left behind in his own handwriting um, the first one uh, most of you have heard about um, is that Elvis filled out his own death certificate um, his handwriting is found on his own death certificate uh, this was verified by a graphologist uh, and we do have a video of the graphologist uh, showing the steps that he went through uh, to compare the handwriting of Elvis uh, against uh, the handwriting on the death certificate. Uh, so we know that Elvis did play a part in filling out his own death certificate. Um, also uh, in the FBI files, uh, if you watched my previous videos, uh, you already know some about Operation Fountain Pen and uh, the uh, Mafia ring that uh, Elvis was involved in bringing down. Uh, <coughs> so in the FBI files uh, you can also find Elvis's handwriting um, on dates that occurred after August 16, 1977. And one in particular he actually wrote out the name Frederick Peter Pro which was one of the men they were trying to take down in this uh, operation. Uh, <coughs> Elvis uh, had a lot of favorite books uh, that he carried with him everywhere. Um, most of them disappeared <laughs> August 16, 1977. Uh, but a couple were left behind and I think there's a reason they were left behind. Um, in one of the books in Elvis's own handwriting that was found in his bedroom um, Elvis had written the words do not stand at my grave and cry I am not there I did not die um, <clears throat> this was written in a book that Elvis typically carried with him uh, everywhere he went and in this case it was one of the books he left behind and did not carry with him although he took most of his books with him August 16th 1977 <coughs> um, and another book um, that was found in Elvis's bedroom um, were I'm looking in my notes here right now um, this was not uh, written in Elvis's handwriting this was a passage that was already printed in the book but it was a passage that Elvis underlined in this book and then left the book behind and uh, this one uh, he underlined if I should return you would not recognize me um, so um, that's another book that he would typically carry with him um, and we're going to talk about another very important book here in just a few minutes uh, <clears throat> that's going to play a part in the hints that we're going to talk about. Uh, but this last book that we're going to talk about, I believe he took with him. It was not in the inventory of Graceland that they did right after uh, he supposedly died. Um, another hint is one that we've talked about numerous times in these videos, and that is the misspelling on his gravesite and if you would like to know more about that uh, it is in a previous video uh, 
more than more than one, I believe, but definitely in the one called Aaron versus Aaron. If you'd like, if you'd like to watch that one. <coughs> um, another hint that I don't think it was Elvis in the coffin is that the uh, uh, the coffin was not draped in the American flag, even though Elvis was an Army veteran. Uh, Elvis had great respect for America, uh, which is why he got into law enforcement and uh, the drug enforcement agency and got involved in all of these things that we've already talked about, <coughs> excuse me, was because of his love for America, yet uh, his, his coffin was not draped in the American flag that he loved and respected. Um, Elvis was supposed to leave on tour August 16th, 1977. And despite uh, gaining 50 pounds since his last tour, uh, he had ordered no new jumpsuits. Um, I don't think, I don't know if he had a jumpsuit that would even fit him anymore. Uh, now Elvis had already told a couple of people, <coughs> uh, one in person, one by phone, um, that he was not going to be going on that tour. Um, but as far as the, uh, the public knew, he was to leave on that tour, but no new jumpsuits were ordered. Um, and then we get into uh, Elvis's final televised concert uh, from June of 1977 that, uh, that he did for CBS. It was televised on CBS. Elvis said something in this concert uh, right before he sang the last song. Uh, and it was something that he had never said in a concert before. And, uh, and I quote, uh, Elvis said, Until we meet again, may God bless you. Adios. Uh, this was a phrase that Elvis had not used before. Um, I believe it was a hint that he was saying goodbye. Uh, he probably already knew at that point that he would be, not be going on that next tour that was scheduled. Um, and in that final televised concert, there seemed to be some hints in his jumpsuit that he wore. Uh, some people call it the sundial jumpsuit. Uh, some people call it the Mayan calendar jumpsuit. But no matter what you call it, it does have the, the calendar uh, on the front. And Elvis was really big into Cairo's Book of Numbers. Uh, that is one book that he never went anywhere without. And he based a lot of things in his life on this book. That is the other book I was discussing a moment ago um, that did disappear August 16, 1977. And if you look on my website, uh, you can see a complete inventory of everything uh, that was found in Graceland uh, when, the, when they inventoried it after he supposedly died. And lots of things are missing. Uh, this book is one of the things that were missing. Um, <clears throat> But he based a lot of things on numerology. Now, the sundial suit, or the Mayan calendar suit, if you look in the, the front of the suit, uh, the big circle, the big round calendar, um, you'll notice eight points on the inside of the calendar, and you'll notice 16 points on the outside, if you count those. And, <coughs> uh, that stood for August 16th, 816. Now we know that he uh, was pronounced dead August 16th, 1977. Uh, and that's what brings me into the hints given to us by numerology. <clears throat> if you read Cairo's Book of Numbers, I have a copy of the book. Um, 
it tells you that if you take a significant date in your life, such as your birth, or a significant year that something happened to you in your life. I'll give you an example. I'm going to give away my age here. <laughs> uh, I was born in 1969. <clears throat> so, if you take 1969 and add them together, you get 25. So then if you take 1969 and add 25 to that, you come to the year 1994. Now, <coughs> I'm not going to give you details, <coughs> but I can tell you 1994 was a very uh, significant year in my life that uh, it changed everything. Uh, I thought my life was over at that point, and that's all I'll say about that. It was a very significant year in two different ways. Two things happened to me that year. Uh, <coughs> so if we if we use that in the case of Elvis, you take a significant year and you do the same thing. Now in his case, let's take 1977, which is the year that he uh, supposedly died. And we add 1977 we get 24. So if we take 1977 and add 24, we come to 2001. What's the significance of 2001, you ask? Well, in the 1970s, every concert that Elvis did in Vegas or when he toured, pretty much every concert after he started wearing his famous jumpsuits he began each concert <clears throat> with the theme song to 2001 a space odyssey <clears throat> now that gives us 2001 going that route taking 1977 and adding the 24 but let's do it another way let's just take August 16th 1977 we know this was an important date for Elvis because either he died or he faked his death and and started a new life. <laughs> so let's take August 16th, 1977. If you add together 8, 16, and 1977, you get 2001. <clears throat> There are so many different things uh, that are possible hints that Elvis left behind. Now, this list that I just gave you are the ones that I'm pretty certain are very good clues. Um, the misspelling on the grave, uh, as we've discussed in a previous video, it's not only Elvis's grave that's misspelled, but also his twin brother, Jesse. His grave is misspelled at Graceland, and we already know that Jesse's grave is empty because the family tells us that Jesse is actually buried in an unmarked grave in Mississippi. Uh, so I really believe that Elvis's grave being misspelled at Graceland is a hint that that is also an empty grave. Um, but everything that we've mentioned in this video, I believe, are true hints. There are a lot of hints uh, that are only maybes. Um, and we don't have time to get into those, but I will do another video uh, on some of those down the road. And until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Have a great night.